Oh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm glad you guys stayed to the end. Um, I just, before I start, just want to shout out, sorry, my cousin and my sister, they're my support system, and I hope I don't cry on the stage. I really do, I hope. So, when I was 13 years old, um, I was faced with the biggest battle of my life. I was diagnosed with cancer, and, um, it's not the time. I was diagnosed with cancer and I was given two diagnoses. I was given acute lymphoblastic leukemia, which has a 90% survival rate. And about two weeks later, doctors came back and said I was diagnosed with acute myeloid leukemia, which has a 50% survival rate. So the odds were, were faced against me. Um, I was given rigorous treatment of chemotherapy, radiation, bone marrow transplant, and even surgery to remove, um, remove an infection I had in my nose. And for most of the treatment, I was very optimistic, but it got, it got, it got too much. And the doctors believed that I was depressed, and I was 13. I didn't know what depression was. It was just something that the doctors were saying. So growing up in an African household, my parents are originally from Ghana, West Africa, and mental illness is, is not a thing there. Um, they barely understood it. So when my mom, um, when they told me that I was gonna be put on depression pills, my mom was against it. And at 13 years old, taking so much medicine, I was like, oh, that's cool with me, I'm, I'm, I'm good. So, Coming from an African background, um, we're just told to pray. And there's, perfect, there's nothing wrong with praying, but there's nothing wrong with praying, but, there, but you have to talk to somebody. There are other many cultures that do not believe in mental illness or see the importance of it. And it wasn't until I came to Stevenson University and I reached college, psychology department, where I learned the importance of mental health and witnessed for myself how much it can take a toll on people. Almost 20% of cultural minorities are more likely to report a serious illness compared to our white counterparts. And according to APA, about 70% of college directors believe that the number of students with mental illness has increased in the past year. My speech is really short, but many times we are afraid to come out and say that there's something wrong with us mentally. And I am very guilty of this, and I don't even catch myself falling off sometimes. But I think that we should take the initiative and inspire others, the courage to get help. And Hannah did a way better job of saying this, but um, I think we should take the time to check in on our loved ones, our friends, our family, and even in ourselves, and tell ourselves that it's okay that we're not okay. Like, we need someone to talk to. There is someone out there who wants to help you. There's someone out there who wants to talk to you, your friends, your family. And like Hannah said, someone wants to talk to you and they want to help you. Um, you shouldn't be afraid of what others think, because I know a lot of times we are afraid that someone's going to think that we're crazy, but we all have our downfalls. And your mental health is the most important thing. And I think it's time that we encourage others to be open about their mental health and get the help that they need. Thank you.